here's Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. Uh, Steve likes to geolocate. And you can see right here, he's geolocated his bio to Los Gatos, California. Well, some of his tweets are also geolocated as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a simple tool called Geo Social Footprint. And we're going to type in his name here. And what this tool is going to do is it's going to grab his most recent tweets, extract the geolocated data, wow. and then plot it in a heat map here. So forgive the for de development purposes only. This just means that the site did not pay Google for access to their, their maps. But if we look at this, you can see where Steve Wozniak is doing his geolocated tweets from. Yeah. Right. Well, it gets even better. Because wow. this is an interactive map, right? So where's a place that pe people normally use social media? What would you say? Uh, where do you use social media, David? <laughs> All over the place. But I mean, in cities is often the place where, like I can see Death Valley there, which is interesting. Yep, Death Valley. But would you say maybe your home and work? That's a really good point. I uh, I would turn my geolocation off, and I'm really scared to tell you anything when you know when I have these video into these interviews. It's like I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. That's a very frequent uh, response to people. So one of the things that Wozniak and Steve Wozniak does is he tweets. Actually, he doesn't tweet with his geolocation on. He uses Foursquare and checks into places, oh, yeah. and yeah. then Foursquare is tied to his Twitter and gets the geolocated content. Um, but here we go. We Remember Steve Wozniak's bio said he was in Los Gatos, California? Well, yeah. if we zoom in on this bright spot right here, guess where it is? Los Gatos, <laughs> California. And guess what? If we keep going in, let's just control zoom. Here we have High Street and Cypress Way, there's a very bright dot right there. Let's wow. just go ahead and go back to Google Maps. I see you're running in a VM, right? I am running in a VM, that's right. Is it just to keep it more secure or make sure it's private? Or it, It's some to protect me from your audience because I know that you have some very <laughs> talented people in your audience. Um, and some it's to make sure that whatever I do in here is, is compartmentalized. Yeah. Um, I don't want to, when I go, I'm also using a VPN. Uh, for instance, when I pull up Google Maps here, you see it pulls up the entire United States instead yeah. of this is Micah's neighborhood where he lives. So some of it's to protect me and some of it's to protect you. Very wise. High Street and Cypress Way in Los Gatos, California. So all we're doing is we are taking this data, High Street right here in Cypress Way, and we are pulling that up in Google Maps. And if you look... Right here, we have that kind of wavy area. Yeah. And if we look over here, here's that wavy area right there. There's a spot. That spot, if I turn on this, seems to have a very big house at it. Guess whose <laughs> house that is? I, I, I wonder. It might be Steve's house, maybe. It might be Steve Wozniak's house with a very nice pool and all. And this wow. is one of the things that we do in certain situations is we just see where the data leads us. Use online free tools to evaluate the data and analyze it, and then come up with a recommendation. If Steve Wozniak had contacted me and say, hey, figure out the risk of my online presence, one of the big things I would say is you show people everywhere you go when, when you tweet and do stuff like that. And that might be something that uh, we could get him to change his behavior on so that we don't see all of the places where he eats and travels to. Michael, it's Foursquare where people check in the whole time. Is that right? That's right. Foursquare is a geolocation-centered type of uh, social media platform. And people still use that. Is it is it quite popular? Yeah. Let's let's go a little off script here, and uh, let me show you uh, just an example. There's another tool here called SocialBearing.com, and what this allows us to do is for free analyze somebody's Twitter profile. So again, let's just go over here to handle. We'll do Steve. Wozniak. What this is doing is grabbing the most recent 200 tweets from his profile, and then it's going to analyze them for me. Now, I like to go ahead and, and hit this a couple of times to load like another 200 tweets and another 200. And what we'll be able to see is not only what is Steve Wozniak saying in his tweets, but how is he saying? How is he communicating to Twitter? Um, and you can see all the statistics here about how many uh, impressions he's got. Don't really care about that. What I care is down here. See his tweets by source? Yeah. 
Yeah. So one of the the, pl- the things that Steve Wozniak does is 59.8% of the last 600 tweets were sent from the application Foursquare. Wow. I mean, as an, 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 as an investigator, I'm looking at that and going, Steve Wozniak doesn't use Twitter as much as he uses Foursquare. And then Foursquare ties to Twitter. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's, and Foursquare is just used for checking in, like I'm at this hotel or I'm at this place now, is that right? Yeah, well, let's take a look at it. But what we can do on the left is filter out some of these things. So let's look at his geolocated tweets. And then if we scroll down, what we get are these tweets. And you see this via Foursquare, yeah. via Foursquare. So these are all of his tweets that are f- tweeted from Foursquare and geolocated. And you can see it says, love uh, many camp songs, startling biome in Death Valley. So yeah, people are checking in. They're posting some content, sometimes with pictures. And then that is trickling over to Twitter because he's connected those accounts. And that would be a good pivot point for us as OSINT investigators. We started with his Twitter, but now we know about his Foursquare and that he uses that probably more than Twitter. It just amazes me because like from a security point of view, you're telling me you're not at home. It's a perfect time to go and rob your house. There actually used to be a site out there called Please Rob Me. And <laughs> um, and it was a it was a proof of concept site where yeah. people literally would watch as people checked into places. And they would say, oh, so-and-so just checked into the Dallas-Fort Worth airport or some airport, and they're not at home. Go rob them. And it was a spoof site, but um, it, it caused a big stir because it, was, it, it brought up these privacy issues. And to be honest, there's a lot of people out there that don't care about privacy. I was going to ask you, you know, do people, are people more aware or is it, are you encountering the same problem, which could be a problem or an advantage for you, depending on what you're doing? Um, are people like, I don't care, I'm just going to share it to the world? Yeah. So there, there are several different, uh, I would say, uh, shades of gray there. There are yeah. the, the very privacy focused, the people that don't care, and then the people that care a little bit. So there, some of their settings will be changed. Um, I don't know if we talked about this on a previous broadcast, but in open source intelligence, there is an inverse relationship with that and privacy. As you yeah. increase your privacy, you decrease what we can find about you via open source intelligence. As you decrease your privacy, we can usually find more or access more. But like the average person out there, let's say non-technical, and I mean, the, depending on who, who's watching this, I mean, you may be watching this just to realize how you're oversharing, but um, what, are average, what does the average Joe do? Or is it just like uh, it, it varies depending on who you're investigating? It does vary. And it yeah. varies not only who we're investigating, but what platforms they're on, because some platforms are a little bit more security conscious. Well, for instance, I'm, Twitter uh, it makes you <laughs> opt in. I know, I know. I have to say this tongue in cheek, but Twitter makes you opt in to do the geotagging. That's terrific. There are some platforms that just automatically do that. I don't know if you remember back when uh, the Parler app was big or Parlay app was big. People put that on their phones. They went places and they didn't maybe didn't realize that the GPS locations were being tagged. Then during the January 6th insurrection over here in the United States, the People went places, their phones recorded it in the app. And then after Parler was compromised, all of that geolocation data that some people didn't even know was happening went, was released to the internet. And wow. uh, that was a very big deal. Yeah. So wow. some platforms really good with privacy. Some make you opt in, say, are you really sure you want to do this? And some are just open and uh, accessible by default. 